Soul Soul Simmers, and welcome to episode 15 of the Builders Bootcamp. I'm really excited for today's episode because finally I'm making the episode about roofing. I know it's something that a lot of people have been requesting. I know it's something that a lot of people want to learn when it comes to building in The Sims. And that is also kind of why I've been postponing it a little, because I know this is one of the most difficult things when it comes to building. But I think I have compiled a good list of tips, tricks and information for you to learn how to become a master at roofing in The Sims 4. So let's get right into it. So before I actually dive into how to create roofs, how you can make roofs that look good, etc., I want to go over all of the roofing options in The Sims. I already placed them down and the reason I want to go over them is because it really helps when you know what kind of roofs you have at your disposal when it comes to deciding what kind of roofs you want. So first we have the gabled roof. It's the first option that is in the menu over here. And then we have the half gabled roof and that is the third option. I don't necessarily get where they're not next together because that would make more sense. But I think they first wanted to go for the full roofs and then for the half roofs because that is how they are sorted. It's a gabled roof, a hipped roof, and a half gabled roof and a half hipped roof. I placed them next together so you can see the difference. A full gabled roof is like a little triangle and then a half gabled roof is half of the triangle. Then you have the hipped roof, that is this one, that is like a sort of a pyramid. And then you have the half hipped roof and that also has one flat side. This is very convenient for when you want to place it right next to another roof. As soon as there is like a flat side to the roof, it's very convenient to use it as not the main roof part, but as a roof that connects to another part of the roof because it has that flat side that you can sort of place next to it. And that way it will neatly merge it like into the other roof that is already next to it. The full gable roof and the full hip roof is the ones that we use for the main parts of the building. And I tend to use these two to actually create separate areas of the roof like little bump outs and stuff like that i use these two then we have four types of roofs that are kind of round or circular there's actually one that's this one that is entirely round that is actually circular then we have um this one that is the six uh the hexagonal roof i very rarely use that because when you place a diagonal wall in the sims or when you do like a bump out in your build that has a diagonal section in it it very often is the shape of the eight and not necessarily of the six then we have the octagonal roof which is the eight sided this is the one that i very often use in my builds whenever i have like i can show you what shape i mean it is when you do um like one diagonal one one straight wall and another diagonal one that is exactly like the shape of the octagonal roof. It's not the shape of the hexagonal roof. And then we have the pentagonal roof, which has five sides to it. Also one that I actually have never used, but I think you can use both of these if you want to make like a gazebo outdoors, where you want to have some sort of a circular roof with maybe columns or pillars, and you don't want to have eight pillars or eight columns. You can use these two to uh, create some sort of uh, a gazebo outside. Then we have these four, which are actually the same as you can see above here. So it's the gabled and the hipped roof and the half gabled and half hipped, but they are placed on a diagonal. So as soon as you're building on a diagonal in The Sims, they have made some roofs that are specifically for that. So you can also place them on there and it will actually look good. These are all of the options that you can see down here below. And it's actually not more than that. That's it. Those are the roofs that you have at your disposal. And this is what you can do with it. I will actually show you how to use all of these roofs, give you some bunch of good tips on how you can make a roof look good. But this is the bare basic. So actually, it's not that difficult. It's just some simple roofs. You can do it. I'm sure you can. <laughs> then I've built us a very neat little box with a gable roof on top so I can show you all of the arrows or all of like the controls that you have over the roof because as you can see as soon as I select the roof there are quite a lot of white arrows and like dots on the side and I will show you guys what you can do with them the most important one is the one on the top and that is to adjust the height of the roof you can make the roof fairly flat but you can also make it really pointy and I mean really pointy seriously sharp. And what I usually like to do whenever I'm making a build, I try to make sure that one roof has the correct height. And then from there on, if I want to use the same type of roof again, I make sure to copy this part of the roof and like place it somewhere in the lot because that way it can always get back to it. And then all of my roofs will have the exact same height. This will eventually make sure that your build looks a ton better because all of the gabled roofs or all of the half gabled roofs, etc., are the same height. And that makes your build look more consistent. It makes the roof looks less 
messy and it's just such an easy thing to change when you're roofing is you know you're just playing around you quickly change the height and then all of a sudden all of the roofs in your build have different heights and it, it just makes the roof look a little bit off and it's details like that that are very easy to fix that will make a huge difference in how your builds and how your roofing looks so as soon as you have a height that you're happy with you might have drawn the roof a little bit too big and that is where the side arrows come in you can also see the one like here in the back if i turn around you will actually see that you know i can find that arrow as well these arrows are for making the roof bigger and smaller so this way you can make sure that the roof fits on your build let's say that you decide to extend the room you can also click on the roof and extend the roof so that the roof is always actually fitting to the build that you're making then we have the little arrows here on the side and if i grab one of those and i drag it in as you can see it kind of drags in the eaves of the roof i can also extend them and make them very very tall i can do this on the front and the back as well as you can see i make can make like a fairly large roof without actually making the roof any larger with the side arrows i can just make the overhang or the eaves of the roof larger if i want to go back to like a normal shape i can do that as well i can imagine however that when you're doing the eaves sometimes you might want to tuck them in on one side but on the other side you want to keep the overhang if you click on the roof and you hold shift while you grab one of the arrows you can actually just do one side as you can see let me actually show it with the camera a little bit this side still has the overhang but this side doesn't you can actually if you hold shift also make this side longer and like completely get creative with how your roofing looks this is such a good tip again i remember learning about separately controlling the eaves of your roofs and it makes such a huge difference whenever you're playing with roofs whenever you're trying to connect roof pieces whenever you're trying to make your build look good or create something that is a little bit more creative when it comes to your roofing having control separately over the eaves because it also works in the front and the back let's say that I hold shift in the back I want I don't want any eaves but in the front I want them to have like a major overhang so I can create a sheltered porch it's so nice to know this it's such an easy trick but if you don't know it you might think how do people do all of these custom roofs well actually it's just one roof piece and they manipulated the eaves so keep it in mind these little arrows control the eaves and if you hold shift you actually only control that one side that you're working on then we get to the little cylinders or little dots that are above the roof and these control the curve of the roof if i select it and i drag it up you can actually see I'm creating somewhat of a barn shaped roof. If I click it and I drag it down, I actually create a Japanese style roof. You can go nuts with this. You can also like ever so slightly make the roof a little bit curved to give a little bit more dynamic or character to your build. Unfortunately, you cannot hold shift and only control one side. So as soon as you actually draw or drag one of the cylinders, it will drag the entire roof. You cannot control just one side. However, and this is something I only learned quite recently, so please do let me know in the comments with like an O slash or whatever, if you knew this, because I didn't, and I've been building for a very long time. So if you wanna get even more control over the curve of your roof, if you click on your roof and you click Shift C, do you see like more dots appear? on the side and this way you get like more control over the curve because with this you only do like you curve the middle part but then you can drag out the top look at that it's like a hobbit roof you get like even more control you can drag the edges down or you can even like drag the edges up a little bit and this way you get so much more control over what your roof looks like. Look, it's like, I don't even know how to explain this. It's like that one bracket on your keyboard, like the one next to the square bracket on the same key. It's like a shaped roof like this. I never knew you could do this until I think a few weeks back. And I'm very happy I didn't record the Builder's Bootcamp video before I knew this, because I feel like this is such a major game changer. Press Shift C again, as you can see, the controls also go away and you kind of get rid of the curve. As soon as you press it again, the control Controls come back so make sure that as soon as you have set this up don't press shift c again because it will get rid of all of the settings that you did but this even gives you more control over the curve of your roof which i think is pretty darn cool and then we actually arrive at the part where we come to roofing a build and my major major most important tip i cannot stretch it enough is make sure that you build your build with the roof in mind so whenever you're like placing a build this really depends by the way i'm a draw a box 
box and add boxes type of person. Some people, I know they can like draw a, a plan like this. They can make a floor plan like this. I don't know how you guys do that. I, I'm in awe of you guys. I cannot make floor plans like this. They always turn out very strange and very weird. I'm the type of person who draws boxes. Whichever comes more natural to you, please make sure to still keep the roofing in mind. This usually comes to deciding or thinking about how you want the roof to look on your build and trying to make sure that you have one, plenty of bump outs and I'm shamelessly sealing a little Simsy tip here. If you have watched any of her videos, her streams or anything, the one thing she always does is she starts with a box and then she starts to add bump outs. That can be small bump outs, that can be big bump outs, that can be entire rooms or just little details. Just make sure that your build is not square or rectangular. Make sure that you have some funky shapes in there because this actually helps you. Even though in the beginning it might feel a little bit daunting, it will actually help you make your roofs look better. It will make a major difference in what you can do with your roof and if you can get creative with them. Then the second thing is make sure that you also have like a bigger part of your build or like a main part of your build where you can add the gabled or the hipped roof. As I said in the beginning, I usually use the half gabled and the half hip roof to add details. And I use the gabled or the hip roof to add as a main roof. So you can add this to like the main part of your build, like the biggest part. I like to draw out the eaves a little bit because I think it looks better. And then you can add roofs to these sides. We can also add this gabled roof and drag it in. As you can see, because the, the corners connect here, it neatly draws in. If this was a little bit smaller and the roof is also one smaller, you can see that it would like neatly go into the build as well. Make sure that if you draw a roof like this, make sure that your roof doesn't end where the room ends. Let's say that, you know, the, the room is two tiles wide. Now the roof is also two tiles wide. You will start to notice that there is a little gap here. Feel free to just drag in the roof and close that gap because that way it looks like it's part of the other roof. It's part of the custom shaped roof. I also don't like it when my roof is too high, especially when it's the hip roof. I like to lower it a little bit. And then maybe in this front part, we want to add a half gable roof. Just put it down and also drag it down so that it will look good. As you can see, however, we start to notice over here that we have a lot of layers and like eaves intersecting. Unfortunately, because this is a hipped roof, I cannot hold shift and just drag in one side. It will always drag in all of the sides. What I can do, however, is like tuck in the eave on this side, draw this out again. And it's already a little bit better, but not perfect. I don't really like what is going on in this corner here. So what I usually do when stuff like this happens, when I feel like the floor plan isn't suited for a certain roof is I just swap it out. I just change it to a different roof because it just makes my life a lot easier. Let me make that lower a little bit. Let me make sure that this is also a little bit lower so that the roof heights are kind of matching. And as you can see, it already starts to look a lot better. That whole overhang situation with, with a little weird corner here is now fixed, or at least it's better than it was before. Try to also just play around with different roof shapes. Try to see if you can figure out a way that all of the eaves and stuff are either neatly tucked away, either neatly tucked in, or just not there to begin with uh, by choosing a different type of roof. Then as you can see, if I still wanna have the eaves on this side, because it might be better from the front, because then you also have a slight overhang on this side, you can see that it kind of looks odd. So what I can do to begin with is like draw this one back so that it kind of ends over here. I feel like this might be still a little bit annoying. So what I do is like maybe I drag it up a little bit and then draw it out. See, and now it perfectly fits. Then when it comes to a second floor is try to make sure that your second floor isn't exactly the same shape as your first floor because that way that will still make the build look very chunky and blocked because you will just have the exact same shape. So if you're doing an upper floor, try to play around and maybe like make the room that is on top ever so slightly smaller than the one that is in the front. Especially if you have a little bit more bump outs, let's say it's like this. This is where it gets very interesting when it comes to the roofing. You can even, if you want, like add an extra bump out here that is slightly smaller than the rest of the downstairs area. Then what I usually do is I start with the upper floor. So I add my main roof on the main floor. There we go. Then I go to the back side. Then I add maybe this half gable roof. Okay, I feel like that looks kind of nice. Then maybe on this side, we can add another gabled roof so that we kind of repeat 
the pattern over here, see? Something that I also really like to do with roofing is try to keep your roofs like turned to the same side. So if I have my roof facing like this way, like this, I wanna make sure that this roof is also facing this way. To be fair, I feel like that looks kind of weird. So I try to keep, you know, the roofing. If you have a wall, the roof like goes like this, like into the wall, because that just looks a lot better than if I were to swap it around. I mean, technically this is a functional roof and it might look cute from the front, but I think it just looks a little bit better if you turn it around. Then on this side, we might want to add a balcony. And this is where it starts to get interesting. It's like we have this little corner piece here, but we might also want to add a balcony over here. We have this little weird corner piece over here. And this is where it actually starts to get useful to use your roofs to actually hide things in your build. What I very often do is I do this with the half gable roof. I draw it all the way across. I make sure that it like ends somewhere over here. And then I do it like that. And that way we actually have a covered porch and I can add some columns to support that roof there we go and that way we actually hide the little weird corners by actually adding a part of the roof and then we can either decide to possibly add a little balcony over here what I think I would do with this build is I would prefer to have a wraparound porch maybe and I will show you how to do that make sure that you have two pieces of the roof that just end at like the tile before the corner and then you can grab a hipped roof and add it in between make sure that it's the same size drag it all the way down and then make sure to like drag it around as well and then you can extend the eaves to make sure that it fits and that way you actually have a wraparound porch you can actually add the house on a foundation if you want and then you can add a little platform around or like a little actual wraparound porch and as you can see, we now have like a farmhouse style house. We can still grab this as well and we can like add it over here. That, that is a very fairly nicely roofed house. And the reason that it looks good is because it has details on all of the sides. There are no sides of this house that are actually completely flat. We have hidden all of the parts of the build that were difficult to roof. Instead of adding like very small pieces of roofs, we decided to add one big major roof on this on this build. This is what I do very, very often. I try to avoid a lot of small roofs. I try to make sure that I have some big roofs and then some accents. If it turns out that it's impossible to roof because I don't want to add major parts of the roof and I want to keep it fairly simple. I don't want to have too much details. I change my floor plan. If I find out it's very difficult. Also, my cat joined. Welcome. This is this is my cat. She's one of my bestest friends <laughs> and she likes to sit on my desk whenever I'm recording. If you want to make a roof that looks different than this, if you don't want to add the major big pieces or like a wraparound porch or anything, change your floor plan. Change the build until you are feeling confident that you can roof it. I cannot stretch this tip enough because I see a lot of people asking like, how do you roof things? And to be fair, if you want to make it easy on yourself, just change your build. Just change the floor plan. As soon as you know what to do, as soon as you become a little bit more experienced in roofing, you can actually get better in roofing shapes that might might be a little bit more diff difficult, might be a shell challenge, for instance, and you can add a good roof over there. But just begin with the things that you have control over, and that is actually changing the floor plan of your build instead of trying to roof something that might just not be roofable right now. This is how I started out as well. I started out with a box with a couple of bump house and then adding some nice roofs. And by doing that a lot, I got better at understanding what might work, what, you know, how I can drag in eaves to make things fit. And by just playing around with it, you'll get a lot better at roofing. Then another very important part about roofs to make sure that they look good is to make sure that they are actually finished. One thing a lot of people forget to add is roof trims, but they can make such a big difference in how your build looks. Look, if I add a roof trim, it immediately changes how the roof looks. I very often use the square roof trim because it adds a simple border to my roofs without being like majorly present, like the one that I just showed first, the bevel it. I have, I don't even know how to say that word. The English is not my native language, as you guys might know. So please do tell me how to say this and what it means. I have no idea. <laughs> you can also change the colors just like anything in The Sims. It has a ton of swatches. So you can give your house like very bright orange trim. This actually does give a lot of character to your build. So don't forget to trim your roofs. It's so easy, but it makes such a difference in how your roofs look. The same goes for the roof pattern. You actually have quite a lot of roof patterns in The Sims. And one thing that just bugs me is if people use the default 
default roof pattern, it looks unfinished. I do not know why. It's not a bad pattern. It's not an ugly pattern. But as soon as people use this one, I feel like the build is unfinished. I feel like they forgot to add a roof pattern. Something that I very often use is the Happy Han shingle roof. I do not know why. I just think it looks really cool to have such a dark roof. And then just add this white trim and just like that you don't you don't even have to draw the trim you can just literally hover over the roof and then select it and a neat little tip is actually if you have a trim selected and you hover over like the side like the the bottom line you can actually add the trim at the bottom line of a roof as well i didn't know this for the longest time but if you want to create more of a distinction between maybe the wallpaper that you use on your build and the wallpaper that you use on your roof you can actually add a nice little trim along the side so even even add more details to your roofs. This is the same as with the friezes and the exterior trims. However, you can only use the exterior trims or the friezes whenever there is like a floor. So between two floors, you can add this. Like you cannot add it underneath a roof, as you can see. Like I cannot make it go that way, but I can add, kind of difficult to add with the gable roof, however, but I can add that, look. And I mean, it's not perfect. Obviously, these are two very different styles and you will still see it. But just to give you an example on how to like add friezes or trims to the part where your roof ends, you can do that with roof trims as well. I didn't know that for the longest time. And ever since I know, I've never gone back. I used it quite often. And then the last thing is actually the roof details. This is where you find like the dormer windows that you might see in other people's build and you might wonder how they do it. You can create custom dormer windows by actually drawing a room. I will show you by drawing a room and then making sure that the roof is tall enough so it like goes in and then grabbing a roof and adding it on top of that room you just added but to be fair you have to like fiddle around a lot with the roofs to make it work i mean it's it's not a bad idea you can actually make this a functional room as well if you want with ladders and stuff like they have some sort of an attic room but you know you can create cus custom dormers but they always turn out a little bit large because the, because of the wall height so if you just want to add decorative dormers we have these things and we have a a lot of different ones from a lot of different packs so depending on how many packs you have you actually have a lot of different dormers to choose from here you can also find things to like add on top of the roof you can find the little little details to tell uh, you know the wind you can find all of the chimneys as well everything that comes to like roof detailing is over here and you can just place it on top of your roofs and obviously this looks kind of odd because I just added it all together but to be honest adding details to your roofs whenever you're happy with the way that the roof is is laid out makes such a huge difference to how the build looks especially the chimneys and stuff i feel like adding a chimney to a build immediately makes it look more alive and it's such an easy detail to add to your roof and it just looks really cozy and cute and it just makes the house look ever so homey so don't forget to add a trim add a pattern and add some details to your roof because it will just make it look so much better without you having to fiddle with the roofs even more that was it for this episode it might have been just me rambling about roofs that's actually what it felt like a little bit when recording it but there's just so much to tell about roofing and i tried to do it as structured as possible i tried to give you as many tips and tricks while actually making a little roof i hope that i have answered all of your questions but do feel free to pop into the comments if you have any other questions about roofing also feel free to tag me on twitter instagram tiktok anywhere if you use any of my tips for roofing because i would absolutely love to see what you guys do with it and if this video was in any way helpful please give it a big thumbs up because it really helps the video get to more people through the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to hit subscribe and the notification bell. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. Bye!